Hey everyone, um, just want to kind of talk about some of the technical notes for this new piece um, and just sort of show off what, what I think is interesting about it. First of all, I just, I know we get a lot of questions about how big this thing is. So it, it's about, it's just shy of five inches long. Um, so let's just start there. Uh, a concept for this piece is, it's kind of a simple one, but it's deceptively difficult one. And I don't know how to explain it other than just sort of to tear it apart. So um, this piece is designed using only lathe operations. So only two axes of motion um, for those of you who are familiar with CNC work. Um, and that is actually a deceptively difficult thing to do when you're trying to come up with complex geometry. Um, and there's another couple of quirks that I, I think are kind of fun about this. Um, it's based off of uh, an older design that, that had a similar sort of feel to it. And one of the issues I came up with, came against with those earlier pieces was just how to assemble this piece. Um, so what you have is a series of turn um, uh, shapes, but um, in order to get these to, to line up, so this piece, you know, has to be indexed a certain way to orient to this piece. Um, and, and all of these pieces are, are part of, of, of a bit of a puzzle. Uh, in order to get that index and only use turning operations, um, I had to sort of resort to some slightly uh, nuanced little offsetting. And so um, some people are gonna get this right away and some people might not, but that's okay. Um, so in the earlier pieces, they were just kind of glued together um, or, or sort of off. Um, I can't remember, maybe I used a set screw on one of them. But um, so the main issue is, and when I pull this out, is in order for this to all line up, um, you have a series of bores that actually are sh do not share a center line. So this bore is um, like an eighth of an inch lower than the center of this piece. And then this bore is an, a sixteenth of an inch higher than the center line for this piece. And when all of those um, circles line up, uh, it helps you to clock the piece to, to where you need it to be. Um, and in the earlier pieces, I think I tried to just, I could have just um, put a threaded nose on this and screwed it in, but there would have been no way for me to um, drill that hole with the proper offset without using a milling machine. I, I mean, I could have obviously done that if I wanted to sort of break with the challenge I set for myself, but in order to, to do this in a way that only used lathe operations, I had to set my offsets in a way that <clears throat> would self-align. Uh, and the other little fun quirk is that um, the way this is held in, uh, I kind of came up with a little cam system this time and it actually works fantastic. And I'm, uh, I wanted to kind of show that off. So I'm just gonna pull this out um, kind of show, show how this all works. So here you can see that the, you know, the offset bores. So this can only, um, slide in and orient one way. Um, because if you tried to turn this, it wouldn't align with that, that plug. And same goes with, with this piece. Um, so what we have here is, um, this little bronze guy is actually a cam. So when I turn this, you'll see it, it, it it's eccentric. Um, so when this assembly goes in, all I have to do is uh, turn this little um, hex key and it, it cams right against the top of this and creates a locking force. Um, and before I get accused of anything, this little um, hex thing was broached with a rotary brooch. So it didn't break my rule for only turning operations. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's it. It's, it's surprisingly simple. Um, so instead of a threaded nose, this just kind of uh, aligns with the, with the thread bore in here. So this threaded hole is only to allow me to hang the part for anodizing. And then this whole assembly slides right in. Um, and then as you can see, this, this can only clock a little bit when it's loose, but as I tighten it, it, it really helps align itself. Um, and then it just cams itself right in and creates a nice easy lock and then the rest of the assembly just goes together like that and then these bases were fun because i machined them in pairs so these are actually machined from inch and a half by three inch blocks so when i grab two of them i get a perfect 
three inch square and I can just grab them and hold them in a four jaw chuck and then flip them over and actually hold this diameter in a collet with two of them. Um, so I, I think there's some pictures out there of that. So um, that's it, that's the gist of it. Um, it's simple and it's complicated at the same time. And uh, that's what I like about it. And then of course the base, this um, slides freely in here. There's a little taper at the back that helps kind of snug it in. But I, I thought, um, you know, people would want to be able to look at this thing from different angles. So I, I'm, I could have drilled a cross hole here and locked it in, but I, I thought maybe, I thought it was better to not try and make it more complicated than it needed to be. It, it, it kind of rests on its own weight and allows you to kind of spit, spin it and pivot it to where you want. So I think that that's probably fine all by itself. So I, anyhow, I hope you guys enjoy it and um, looking forward to hearing some, some comments and feedback. Thanks.